So if you've been subscribed to my channel, you'll know that I like to mess around with these LEGO engines. And what's cool about LEGO is that they make these tiny little pistons for you to incorporate into your builds. Now it always kind of bugged me because these pistons are... Uh, these pistons are kind of small compared to the cylinder that houses them. And if you do want to make an engine that houses these cylinders, you're going to end up making an engine that's way too big for the pistons itself. So what's the solution? Well, I've uh, made my own uh, B-Series engine. Um, and the trick is, is that I used my own set of pistons. Now, these pistons are made from a keychain, which I got from Amazon. So I bought four piston keychains and I've just decided to incorporate them into my LEGO build. So I spent quite, I, I spent, uh, quite a bit modeling this engine on Bricklink Studio and I think I'm pretty pleased with the design. Uh, if you're a car guy and you're into Hondas, then you'll know this is the most popular engine ever made. It's the B18C, which is found in the Integra Type R. Um, so I try to model it as accurately as possible, uh, and I, I, uh, I included stuff like the distributor, ignition wires, the spark plugs, four of them, exhaust manifold, power steering, motor mounts, power steering pump and return line, the crankshaft, the alternator, and since this is the Type R, it actually doesn't have air conditioning. If we move on to the back, we have the intake manifold. Now, um, I didn't put the PCV exactly where it should be, but this is the PCV, and it directly connects it to the uh, head of the engine. Uh, it's not exactly where it should be, but I wanted to at least make it somewhat realistic. The uh, other side includes the bell housing for the transmission and the overall shape of the block is uh, fairly accurate in my opinion. The features that come with this engine are actual moving pistons. So the valve cover can separate. Uh, although there is no valve train and head, there is still moving pistons. So I'm pretty much very well pleased with how the model came out and even the exhaust manifold is pretty much accurate uh, but i thought to myself why stop there why not make the whole engine base so that's what i did um so i'm gonna put the engine inside the engine bay and then i'm gonna go through every single uh, component that i chose to incorporate uh, into this model so here it is um Going to talk you through all the things uh, that you see here. So this engine is a is an engine from a Honda, and I wanted to basically incorporate all the things the engine needs to run, to idle, to basically become very reliable and self-sufficient. Uh, so starting off in the front, we're going to have to have a cooling system because without a cooling system, the engine overheats and you'll blow a head gasket. Radiator, radiator cap, and the radiator overflow. Uh, to the right is a windshield uh, washer fluid reservoir. Uh, behind that is the power steering pump with the power steering return line. Uh, under that is the pulley for the power steering pump. We have the brake booster. Now the brake booster is given its power via the vacuum line that's coming from the intake manifold. We have the fuel tank, uh, which has two lines. One line goes to the fuel filter, goes across the fuel rail to the fuel pressure regulator, and down back to the tank. Um, of course, an engine cannot start with a battery. Battery powers the starter to give the engine the initial startup sequence. This side, we have the distributor. Distributor distributes the spark to all four cylinders via the ignition wires and the this is the radiator that uh, can, that takes the coolant and uh, basically brings it back inside the block. The motor mounts are made out of rubber so the engine has a bit of give and everything you see here can be powered via power supply and an electric motor. 
since this is all Lego, obviously there is no combustion happening. So we simulate the engine running by spinning it with an electric motor. I think I went through everything. Um, yeah, the valve cover comes off. You can see the pistons. Um, so I have a slight uh, gearing reduction here so that the motor can operate efficiently because it does take quite a bit of torque to spin uh, the whole motor because the, the pistons are a lot heavier than the uh, Lego ones that we always uh, know and love. Uh, so the components on this one are a bit heavier. Uh, it's actually steel, I think, die cast pistons actually. Uh, so you're going to need uh, a lot more torque to get those spinning at a faster RPM. So a lot of people ask me how the engine spins. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's all done by electricity. And the reason why it sounds like an engine is because you're basically hearing the clatter of the pistons moving up and down which kind of tend to simulate the exhaust pressure that comes out of an engine. Um, but the key important thing here is having a power supply. Uh, power supply allows you to vary the voltage that's given to the electric motor. That way you can simulate revving the engine. And you can just basically control how fast the engine goes. And yes, just like a real engine, you gotta add oil to the critical components, which include where the crankshaft uh, and the connecting rod meet. Uh, just because we're doing very high RPMs, you don't want the plastic to melt. Uh, it also makes the engine turn a lot more free, um, so that's always good for the electric motor, and you're not using high enough amperage that it may burn your wires.
if you guys like this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. If this video gets over 5,000 likes, uh, I'll do everything I can to blow up this engine. I'm going to rev it up to 10,000 RPM.